Welcome, sinners. Right now, I'm currently editing the tier list for Hasbun Hotel. Sadly, the audio is not that great, and there's some ringing in the background. I know what it is. It's my lights. You gotta fuck around with them for them to stop. Also, I realized I should probably get more for Kurt and Marco. <laughs> anyway, we're here. Some of us are queer. Let's fuck. <laughs> In all seriousness, I'm doing another tier list. It has nothing to do with the Hellverse, though it does have to do with Christianity. Of course, you read the title, so you know it's the Ten Commandments. Now, I'm not shitting on Christianity by any means, but you know... I know Christians that question things in the Bible. My mother, for example. She was the first person to put the idea in my head that Jesus was just a man. And because he was a man, he most likely had children with Mary Magdalene. It's what men back then did. Got married, popped out some babies, die at the age of 25. What this list is for is ranking the commandments based on any real world implications, specifically in this era. But yeah, let's just jump right into it. Commandment 1. Thou shall have no other gods before me. In other words, it's blasphemous to believe in any other god besides the Christian god who doesn't even have a name, he's just god. This obviously is horseshit. I'm not exactly literate on other religious texts, but I will bet you anything that they all have a saying that you cannot worship this god because they're the evil ones. The devil, uh, and with all the people that actually believe that, things get messy. All forms of prejudice, anti-Semitism, Zionism, racism, Islamophobia, you name it. Since there's literally nothing good about this commandment, it's gonna be a D. Second commandment, thou shall not make unto thee any graven images. I gotta admit, this one was tricky. Well, at first glance, I thought it was about tattoos, but then I dug a little deeper and apparently a graven image was like a wood carving. If you have a carving of an animal, that is a graven image and that is considered a worship. Also, aligning nature with spirituality. <laughs> makes nature a graven image, since God has no authority over it, even though he made the earth. With that logic, wouldn't walking around with a crucifix be considered a graven image? I mean, that's not actually Jesus. That is a handcrafted object. Not to mention disturbing. Like, no offense to Christians, but why make the image of your savior the place where he had died? slowly, basically humiliated to death. I guess you could argue that it's because he died for our sins, but still. Why you gotta do Jesus like that? This commandment is completely bullshit. Commandment 3. Thou shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. What does it mean to take the Lord's name in vain? What the fuck? I thought I heard something outside my window. <laughs> Anyways, honestly, I think it's weird that we say things like, oh my god, or Jesus Christ, just as an exclamation. However, that started out, if you're like me and you don't believe in God or Jesus being a holy man, this has no implication whatsoever to real life. As to what it means to take the Lord's name in vain, it's basically saying God or Jesus without the intention of speaking to God or Jesus or speaking about God or Jesus. It doesn't really hurt anybody, though it is censorship in a way. I find it hilarious that we have to censor saying Jesus Christ in any context. Well, not entirely hurtful, it is still kind of stupid. That'll be nice, I'll give it a B. Commandment 4, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For Christianity, the Sabbath day was actually on a Saturday, since it was the seventh day, and I don't know, they really loved the number seven. Then once Jesus resurrected on a Sunday, the Sabbath then became the day of remembering Jesus. And that's why most people only go to church on Sunday. I think even if you're in a religious household, I don't think it's really necessary to go to church. My own mom has gone to many churches before she decided that none of them really fit her beliefs. And you know what? Jesus has stated that we should pray in the privacy of our house with our families, not in public, like these weird religious fanatics with microphones. Also, you should not, under any circumstances, 
force your children to go to church. Is that something the kid wants to do? By all means, let them. But I also know none of kids have been abused by members of the church, whether they're pastors or just family friends that went to the same church. There is harm in this. For one thing, we're listening to one man who's not God, just a man who claims he has spoken to God, telling you how to live your life. That's a D for me. Commandment 5. Honor thy father and thy mother. Basically, it's just an excuse to get away with being a shitty parent. Now, we know what it's saying. Listen to your parents. Be good. Bam. That's not a bad thing. Though, this really doesn't apply to every household. When it comes to this commandment, all I can think is, whom is raising thy children? Are they stable? Are they abusive? Are they providing their children with the love, support, food, housing, everything that they need. Yeah, that commandment pretty much comes from a place of privilege. I'll give it a C since it's... What's that word? Subjective. Commandment 6. Thou shall not kill. I don't like it. Simple. What I find ironic about this is that I know there are a lot of religious people that go into the military, the army, but at some point they gotta break that one rule. Also, it's really easy to say that you would Oh my god, this is gonna sound so bad. It's really easy to say that, oh, I could never do that. Until like, you're put into a situation where you have to defend yourself or somebody else. Shit, maybe you got in an accident. <laughs> Fucking gnats. Oh my god. <laughs> I just really... <laughs> Look, my I sinned. Which brings me to my next point. Does this apply to animals? First thing you think of when you read, Thou shalt not kill, you think, Oh, you're not supposed to kill another human. But what about animals? Personally, I'm a vegetarian because I don't like the idea of feeding a roasted carcass. Of course, I don't force anybody to become a vegetarian. If anything, I got a lot of people just asking me like, Hey, you want some meat? Mmm, you don't know what you're missing out. Like, yeah, I do. I used to eat that shit since... How's a baby? <laughs> we like to think that animals are lesser than us because they're not as aware or smart. But you know what? If you're hunting for food or sport, you're still ending a life. But all in all, I think this has like the most real world implications, morally and legally. Commandment 7. Thou shalt not commit adultery. When I was doing research, I thought adultery was just having sex before marriage. But no. It's actually cheating on your spouse. Honestly, yeah. It's not a bad rule. Now, I don't condone the parts in the Bible saying, like, your wife must be murdered because she's a whore. Also, this only applies to monogamous people. The deeper meaning of the commandment is that you don't sleep with another person's spouse. Which, in polyamory, you could be married and have an ethical, non-monogamous relationship with other people, and that in itself would be considered sinful. Now, if we were to apply this to polyamorous relationships, the commandment could be rewritten as, Thou shall not cheat and deceive on your hoe. Let's go with A. Commandment 8, thou shall not steal. I think we can all agree that stealing is wrong. I'm sure there are many scenarios where stealing is absolutely necessary. Obviously the thing that you want to avoid is stealing other people or children. But if one was hungry, like starving hungry, they were living on the street, I don't know, somebody dropped food by accident. Would you blame them? I sure as hell wouldn't. This took a really weird turn. <laughs> I hope that made sense to you guys. Um, be. Commandment 9. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. This commandment right here makes more sense than any of the ones I just listed. Especially now. Every day in the news, you hear someone making allegations against one another. And a lot of times, those allegations are not true. When shit goes sideways, these people just throw integrity out the window. Have to make up some sob story, make themselves the victim. The victim of their own shame. Easily going up on top. Finally, the tenth commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's hot. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. The word covet means to lust after, have a really strong desire. And of course, lust is considered a sin. In the verse where it is mentioned, it also talks about coveting your neighbor's wife, 
uh, among other things, I don't remember. <laughs> and you know what? It's not a bad rule to live by. Actually, I think every religion or spiritual practice can agree with that. I remember, I don't know, four years back, I was doing some research on Buddhism, and I read somewhere, the root of all suffering is desire. Now I took that quite literally. I'd wear pants out in the hot summer sun, but I would just still be happy, quietly boasting to myself while everyone else was suffering. But yeah, all in all, the message is be grateful for what you have. Even though what somebody else has looks so much better, you don't know them, truly. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Of course, lust and envy, they can be hard to control, especially mentally. Like, oh man, Jim's lawn looks so much better than mine. Like, you can't stop those thoughts from happening. But all in all, I give it a... And there we have it. Ten Commandments ranked by me, the professional. <laughs> now this is just for fun, not trying to villainize anybody here, except the ones who deserve it. God damn it, my water's empty. Until they come out with another commandment, like and subscribe, ring that bell, and I'll ring it right back to you. I'm gonna tell God all of my troubles when I get